Hey guys, Tony from Fresh Cap Mushrooms here and today I'm super excited because I'm out in the woods and I'm looking for oyster mushrooms. The species that grows around here is something called Pleurotus populinus and this is different from the typical oyster mushroom uh, called Pleurotus ostriatus and it's also different from you know the other cultivated oyster mushrooms like yellow oysters or pink oysters that you might find at the farmer's market or the grocery store. Um, this one again Pleurotus populinus it grows on dead or dying aspen trees. It's super easy to identify. It's a really beginner friendly mushroom. Also when you find it there's a good chance you're going to find a lot of it and it's a perfect mushroom to take home and enjoy. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to be looking for dead or dying aspen trees, hopefully find some oyster mushrooms. Then I'm going to help you kind of identify them. We're going to harvest them and take them back if we're lucky enough to find some and cook them up and enjoy them. So yeah let's go out in the woods and see what we can find. So oyster mushrooms are saprophytic, meaning that they grow off of dead or dying plant matter. Now this is different from something like a chanterelle or a porcini that's a mycorrhizal mushroom that forms kind of a symbiotic relationship between a living tree and the mushroom. Uh, oysters break down that dead matter and that's why you'll always find them growing on dead logs or dead trees and you'll never find them growing straight out of the ground. So instead of just looking for mushrooms, a good strategy typically is to look for dead or dying hardwood trees and to see if there's any oyster mushrooms growing on them. But once you see them, um, they're really easily recognizable. The only potential lookalike in Alberta anyways is a species called uh, Crepidotus, but it's kind of you know falsely similar if you just tell somebody to look for a shelf mushroom growing off of a, a dead log, they might see a Crepidotus. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Um, and think it's an oyster mushroom, but those ones are typically a lot smaller. They grow singly instead of in clusters. Um, you know, the gills are different and they just look totally uh, different. So once you see a real true oyster mushroom, whether it be Pleurotus populinus, uh, Pleurotus ostratus, or any of the other oyster species, there's really no denying knowing what you have. Hey, so I spotted some. I don't know if you can see them already. Kind of some of them are hiding behind a bush there. But those are oysters. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. So you can see, yeah, these are without a doubt oyster mushrooms. There's a nice little cluster there. And another one here. And you can see they're still pretty small. Honestly, these probably have a bit of a ways to grow so I might only harvest one of these clusters probably this one here until I can find some more um, but yeah you can see how they they grow in a, a cluster like this they aren't they're not singly um, if they're growing right out of the side of the tree they'd be more kind of on a shelf but here they're growing up top so they grow in kind of this nice bouquet formation which would be similar to what you'd get um, if you're cultivating oyster mushrooms so yeah I'm gonna harvest these off of this tree and we can take a closer look so I got my handy little mushroom knife here and uh, you totally don't need this, you can just pick them off your, with your hand if you want to, but this does make it a little bit easier. So I'm trying to do it one-handed. Now it's pretty easy to tell that this is an oyster mushroom just by looking at it, but if you read the guidebooks, they always say to smell them, and that they smell a little bit like anise, and to be honest, I have no idea what that smells like, but to me it just smells like oyster mushroom. Uh, definitely smells mushroomy, and when you look at it, you can see some of the characteristics. So let's take a closer look. You can see that it doesn't really have a true stem, kind of like a lot of other mushrooms that you might find growing out of the ground. Um, it just kind of has like a shelf. And if this one was growing on top of the log like this, but if it had been growing on the side, it would have even less of a stem than it has here. And you can see that the gills kind of go all the way down this false stem. And the gills are pretty, you know, widely spaced, not crazy widely spaced, but um, they're not super tightly packed. And you can see some of them go all the way down the stem and some of them don't. So they don't have really a distinct uh, gill pattern that follows perfectly all the way down the stem. And again, you'll quite often see them growing in clusters like this um, or bouquets or whatever you want to call them. But sometimes they will grow singly. And I think I already see one on this log that is doing that. So let's go take a look at that one as well. Okay, perfect. So here's another oyster mushroom that was growing on this same log. As you can see, this is just one fruiting body that's kind of growing right on the side. So let's go ahead and pick that off. Now you can see how it doesn't really have a stem. It's got that same kind of gill pattern. 
and yeah, just one nicely growing, perfect oyster mushroom fruiting body. So again, this one would probably grow quite a bit bigger, but if you leave it too long, uh, the bugs will likely enjoy the mushroom before you get a chance to. And I still want to take these home uh, and be able to cook them up and enjoy them. So there's another couple little mushrooms that I'll harvest as well. Now an important thing to remember with all mushroom harvesting is once you harvest it, uh, you want to make sure you don't just go put it in a plastic bag or something because the mushrooms will sweat and eventually they will just kind of you know, turn to mush. Um, so I like to put them in kind of a, a basket is usually the best or like a mesh bag or something like that that you can carry them around and you won't have your mushrooms uh, kind of go bad before you get a chance to take them home. So uh, I'm going to keep looking around. You know, if we found these ones growing, uh, there's a chance that there's a lot more growing. Maybe some of them hopefully will be bigger than this and uh, we'll collect enough to go home and make a meal. So again, I cheated a little bit because that was the exact same place that I found oyster mushrooms last year. So I had a pretty good idea that they were gonna be there. Now you might just think, well, maybe you can just go back to the same tree or the same log every single year and you know get a never ending crop of oyster mushrooms. But that's not really true. I'm pretty sure, I don't know the data on this, but I'm pretty sure oyster mushrooms will only grow back you know, a couple years, maybe two or three years. Um, and then you'll have to look elsewhere, but you know, good news is they release spores. Those spores are likely to infect nearby uh, dying trees or nearby logs, and you should be able to find mushrooms, uh, you know, in, in close to the same area because they'll continue to propagate themselves. So yeah, since we found some, I'm gonna keep on looking around and hopefully we can find some more. If not, that's okay because we already have enough for a tasty meal. All right, so I have my oyster mushrooms at home here. Keegan's got a nice meal cooking up here, but I'm just gonna make these as a little bit of an extra. So first thing you wanna do when you get your oyster mushrooms home is clean them up a little bit. They're gonna have lots of dirt on them. Uh, you wanna check them for bugs. You don't have to go too crazy. Some people say never to wash mushrooms, but I always like to wash wild mushrooms just because like I said, there's dirt and bugs on them and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna pick all that stuff off and then uh, cut them off. And I do see this mushroom in particular I can see that it has a tiny little hole here where you know a bug is burrowed into. So likely this mushroom is no good no more. But you can see, you know, some of the other ones are just perfectly, perfectly fine. So that's kind of the whole point of cleaning them up. We're gonna, you know, make sure that there's no bugs kind of crawling all over them and clean them up. And then we're just gonna rip them into slices and then fry them up in a pan with some butter or butter substitute. Um, add some salt and pepper, maybe some garlic, and then they're a perfect, nice little treat. Now, if you've never eaten wild oysters before, you wanna make sure that you don't go eat a whole bunch, right? Because they're an edible mushroom, but there's always people could have you know personal sensitivities to them. Um, so you always wanna start small, but this is definitely just kind of a, a nice little, small little bounty. So we're gonna slice these up and get them cooking. So I just cut the stem off, and this right here is what it looks like when it's bug eaten. You can see that, um, the stem of the mushroom is kind of hollowed out with all of these little tunnels that are, you know, have been dug by bugs and that's pretty gross. So I don't know, I probably won't eat this one and hopefully they're not all like that. I've already got a few good ones, so I'm gonna keep looking through them and hopefully they're not all bug eaten. So a few of them had creepy crawlers in there, which honestly, when you're hunting wild mushrooms, that's gonna happen all the time. Almost any species of mushroom, if you leave it too long, bugs will kind of burrow their way in there and uh, get to enjoy it before you do. But we still ended up with a tiny little bounty, uh, just enough to kind of fry up. Now oyster mushrooms are a delicious gourmet mushroom. Not everybody likes them, I love them. They're a little bit chewy, I guess you would say, especially if there's a lot of stem, um, but they have a lot of flavor and they got a really nice texture, I believe. And uh, yeah, just a really good mushroom. And you're not gonna be able to find ones like this at the grocery store, that's the thing. When you're growing your own oyster mushrooms or you're finding them in the wild, uh, you can find mushrooms that you're just not, not gonna get this quality if you try to get them at the grocery store.
So I'm definitely not a cook, but I got Tegan around, so she made a delicious meal of some jackfruit, some rice, and some other stuff. <laughs> but uh, put the oyster mushrooms on top, and I'm gonna try them out. And they're really good. I mean, they're oyster mushrooms, which obviously we didn't get a whole heck of a lot of them, but um, it's still just really fun to go find something in the woods and harvest it, whether you grow it yourself or whether you find it out in the woods. So as always, if you're gonna go out and harvest your own mushrooms, make sure you know what you're looking for. And if you're unsure, just uh, hook up with your local mycological society or go with someone who knows what they're looking for because although oyster mushrooms are easy to identify, they're a great beginner friendly mushroom. And as you can see, you can cook them and make a nice little meal out of them. Um, you still wanna make sure you know what it is that you're eating. So yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of these oyster mushrooms. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony and Tegan from freshcatmushrooms.com and uh, we'll see you in the next video.